Well, welcome back to a, uh, another session of uh, the 8th grade design project. Uh, I think that uh, what you see in front of you, let's focus that, is a pretty good operation that we've had so far. So uh, my uh, goal here today is to begin uh, the coloring of this uh, by looking at my reference sheet, which I have. Of course, right in front of me, just it's off screen for you all. And also, uh, considering all of the things that uh, are a requirement for this particular project, which were on uh, the worksheet we keep referencing. If you were in the physical classroom, you would actually fill this worksheet out and you should be able to explain yourself. So the uh, ten different uh, elements of art and principles of design, what we just call design ideas, and then uh, these uh, five requirements here, uh, your initials, uh, some about your culture, uh, country, uh, state, ethnicity, uh, your ancestors and your parents, grandparents, etc. Eight interests that are important to you, not just things that, you know, just talking on the phone really doesn't count. Uh, birthday has got to be in there is like your establishment date and something to do with your zodiac symbol which I've got here because I am a Gemini and then embellishments which are decorations uh, they don't always have to have some sort of meaning generally they go into the border uh, and uh, they are usually um, just decorative they don't have to have any meaning although many times they do so when we left off at the last session uh, we had finished these uh, eight uh, circles with the interests in the middle of all of them. So if you are doing the project along with me, similar to the one that I'm doing, uh, then you should easily have been keeping up with me. If, on the other hand, uh, you are doing something different, it should still have taken you this long to develop your ideas because eight important interests are kind of difficult just to make up off the top of your head. So uh, my theory is that when I start doing my coloring, and I've already thought a lot about the coloring in the previous layout work, that keeps me from having to rethink it t so much. I'm simply going to use the colors that I've already chosen here, and with few exceptions am I going to deviate from those colors. And I'm going to start with the biggest objects first, and uh, so that I don't have to drag my hand uh, through my artwork and smudge it all up, I'm going to use a slip sheet, which is simply an index card in this case, although it could just be a, a piece of paper or even a, a piece of cloth I've seen some people use. So I'm going to be looking at my reference piece right here. I'll probably start in the upper left-hand corner since I'm right-handed and I really loathe dragging my arm through my work. And so I'll simply look at what I've got here and begin uh, coloring that in and look for the largest areas first and get to all the details and the cut-in work at a later time. Okay, so it looks to me like the uh, orange is going to be where I start with this uh, because my initials are that way. And so what I'm really trying to do here with these videos is simply duplicate uh, the experience that you would get in the regular physical classroom if we were together. And so I'm using a box of uh, Crayola, 24 count Crayola colored pencils, uh, and I almost always use the exact same materials as I have for the students in the physical classroom. And this shows me uh, what the limitations of those various materials are and shows me also as your instructor uh, some of the uh, complications and issues that you might run into uh, as a result of using these uh, items. And uh, so it's really helpful as an art teacher to do the projects that the students do and I have done them many times. Uh, this particular project not so many times. Uh, however, uh, the typical projects I've done them many times. And I have come to uh, some understanding of how these materials work and uh, coloring methods and technique and, uh, and how to achieve the opacity that I know I'm looking for and you may not appreciate uh, at the middle school level. However, I think that after you are older you will find that opacity is really an important part of being able to uh, have quality artwork. Or even if you're just going to have your house or car painted. So uh, you really want that opaque color. You don't want to be able to see through the old, see the old paint through the uh, new paint. Now this is coming across on the projection screen almost as a red, but it is an orange. You can see that I'm using Crayola orange, so it's so super saturated that I believe it's uh, it's kind of reading as red on our projector and on the screen. So you may just have to have some level of trust 
that I am using the color I say I am using. Uh, however, uh, orange, uh, as you know, is made out of red and yellow, and so there is red content in it, and perhaps that is what is being filtered uh, by the uh, camera, the document camera, as well as the uh, projector. Now, if we were together in class, uh, you would be working on this project, and we would be doing it together, just as you see uh, me coloring it in right here on, in our e-classroom, or if you were making this lesson up, then uh, you are working on your own, I would assume, at this point. However, uh, we do the projects together. Uh, that was inspired by some of the instructional videos I saw as a child. Uh, with, uh, of course, Bob Ross, and there are other art instructors on TV as well when I was a child. And so I found that not just in making visual art, but also in teaching uh, other uh, tasks or other skills, such as music, learning to play guitar, uh, the drums, uh, and many things are very similar where you need what we call a mediated learning experience, somebody who knows how to do this already, showing you how it's done, and uh, then you simply follow along. If you were learning to weave a basket, for instance, or to uh, sew or cook, it's generally best, some people are naturally talented and don't need so much of it, but generally it's the best idea to get the proper information to have that mediated learning experience. And so that's a very powerful educational tool, and um, it works really, really well. Although the level of the person that's doing the teaching and the level of the people who are receiving the teaching uh, is many times different. And so the products come out differently. Although uh, mo what's more important than the product in the end is the process of learning how it's done. That's what's most important. So we call that process is more important than the product. Okay, that is a good looking uh, piece of coloring right there. And so I'm going to resharpen my orange again because I have some other areas of orange to fill in here and then move on to another portion and uh, it is always a good idea to I believe to start with the larger portions uh, it just kind of gives you more motivation to keep going uh, working on the very minute areas is very tedious work and can also uh, take a long time to develop and as a result of that you find yourself getting uh, bored with it. Okay, now in this, my uh, layout work, my idea work earlier, we kind of alternated these colors and the block lettering. So instead of the typical shadow that you might experience in there, I uh, put in orange just to mess with the viewers and create more visual interest in this piece of work. And furthermore, I did that on the bottom of the letter here as well, a letter K, that is. So I think you uh, may be noticing that sometimes it takes a couple of extra days to do the planning work, but because of the, well, extra class sessions are only 40-something minutes long, uh, but the time that you put in to planning pays huge, huge dividends uh, when it comes to the execution of the work itself. And so, never uh, underestimate the power of good planning. It saves time, makes for better products, almost always. I can't guarantee that that works every time, all the time. However, in this case, it's working for me. Now, planning is also a skill that you develop after having failed many times from lack of planning or uh, have perfected the uh, planning skill simply because it works for you. Uh, whatever is the, the reason or the methodology that you decide to come to making a plan, I think most people that have one succeed at a much higher rate than people who just kind of wing it as they go. And there will always be those few people that wing it successfully, but that's really not a, uh, let's just say, a plan for success how it works out sometimes. Okay, this orange is looking really, really good on the actual piece of artwork, although it is reading as more of a red orange on the projection screen there. 
so I'm pretty happy with it so far. And uh, the real paper, the project paper, is a uh, is, is a type of drawing paper, and so uh, it takes color really, really nicely. And uh, the colored pencils really bite into it because of the texture of the drawing paper. And so uh, people don't appreciate that the texture of the paper, the texture of the surface that they may be painting on, in fact, sometimes has a great deal to do with the. Uh, how opaque or transparent the colors come across. Uh, papers that have a shiny surface are very, very difficult to get colored pencils and, and crayons to stick to. And so the appearance is very skipped over a lot of times and uh, not really opaque. It's also hard to get them to last because the, uh, the colored pencil, the pigment, uh, just simply won't stick to it. Uh, and it's hard to make permanent art that way. So the texture of the paper, or its tooth, as it's known, uh, has a great deal to do with how uh, attractive and how uh, durable the piece of artwork is as well. So people ask me why uh, don't we use markers. And we do use markers, but we use them for uh, things like uh, our folders that we make in the physical classroom. So markers are perfectly fine for that, but they simply just don't make quality, permanent artwork. Uh, they're just not that type of a material. And uh, there may be some people that work in that medium successfully, uh, but it's just like a, when you print a picture from a computer. It looks good at first, and then after a little while the inks start to fade and uh, many times run together and it just doesn't make a good permanent piece of artwork that way. Alright, but the real thing here, the paper and the colored pencil together are making a tremendous impression. And so as we continue our work through this, I think you're going to see that uh, what bit of planning that I did, uh, and I'm hoping that you did too, is going to pay huge here. Okay, now, I'm starting to have to tuck some things together a little more carefully. So I'm looking forward to being done with the orange here so I can move on to a larger block of color, which is probably going to be something in the background of these letters. Now, in my design work, uh, when I was laying this out, uh, I was using black on the other portions of my initials here. But I'm going to hold off on that. Uh, black is a great color, but it tends to smear when you uh, put it on. So you have to work with it very carefully and in areas where you might be going back and retouching portions of the drawing and the coloring. Man, it can show, it can smudge into the next color and if you try to erase it out, all you're going to make is a tremendous mess. So what I have learned over many years of success and failure in making art is uh, if you can wait till the, the end for the darker colors, that's usually a good decision. Now, it, it doesn't work perfectly every time. Nothing works perfectly every time. So, uh, but it works often enough that it's a good habit to get into. And when you find yourself wanting to immediately start uh, coloring in the dark browns, the blacks, and the violets, well, you know, you need to maybe think about that again for a few minutes before you do it. Okay, so this has come along quite fantastically. Let me see if there's any other oranges on my layout work that I've got to deal with right now. I don't see any. So I think I can move on. I'm, I think I'm going to do this aqua in the background up here next. Okay. So I think aqua and orange go together really well. They totally remind me of the ocean and the, and the sunset. So that will be reappear in some other letters as well. Uh, this color combination uh, intrigues me. 
but it also, I mean, simply looks good together. It's not just the psychological content that it has. Uh, but I am a, a lover of the beach and the sun, so I am thinking about vacation even as we talk right now. And, uh, going to the Florida beaches, seeing the clear waters in the Gulf of Mexico, watch the dolphins. Swimming in the surf, getting suntanned, sunburned. It's a pretty good time. Reading on the beach, just watching the waves. So I wish I was there now, but I'm not. I'm here making this fine artwork with you all, and uh, that's a good thing also. Now, this aqua comes across on the projection screen uh, as pretty close to the real thing. Uh, here, what I'm looking at, this minty color of green. So, uh, some of the colors, it's interesting the way that they uh, present themselves after they've been filtered through a camera under the lighting that the project is being videoed in uh, and then the way it goes through the projector and then after it leaves the projector and goes into the actual video camera that's kind of unusual how it changes a bit at a time like that but that's what we have to live with when we can't be in the physical classroom Alright, this started to come together. So I'm going to go back and dress up any of the opacity issues that we'll have to constantly be recoloring something that's already been colored. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now we've got to look back at the uh, concept piece, and it shows me that there's some more aqua. And anything that's above this split line right here is going to have aqua in it as well. So isn't that a feeling? So that uh, now here we are in the detail work. Sometimes you have to stick with you. Sometimes you just have to be patient. But I think that shows up fantastic against that. And right here is another swatch. Right? So when you put these colors, certain colors against each other they show up against each other really well, especially if they're from opposite sides of the color wheel. And the oranges and the uh, aqua green, which is a blue-green, are completely directly opposite each other on the color wheel. Red oranges as the absolute opposite of aqua green or blue-green. So they show up against each other really well, have a powerful uh, interaction with each other. So I am going to go to this next part right here, which I chose to uh, not go with that three-dimensional part of the M so that I could play up this interaction between these two colors in the background, and then my letter K can still see, be black, and as a result of that, it gives me an interesting little design uh, feature where people will try to look past that space a lot of times. So whenever you can have things that overlap or you've got areas where you can look through and see something else on the other side that is great design idea uh, anything that keeps people turning their head and uh, looking in different directions and moving their eye around uh, the idea of movement <coughs> that's in our notes is really really potent that means it's uh, it makes a big impact on people Okay, back over in here. Now, see, that one is black, the way I see it on note. That is going to be also... Hmm, that's interesting. What am I going to do with that? That is going to have to be... Can't be orange. Hmm. Well, I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to make it aqua. Because it's not precisely reproduced the way that the... Uh, layout work was so now I've got to take a risk even though I did my planning I didn't count for that 
So we'll see how that works out in the end. And if it makes it look visually interesting or not. Now this we can see all the way through there. So we'll go ahead and tag that in. And I hope your projects are going along as successfully as mine. I gotta say I'm pretty in, I am uh, happy with this so far. Uh, I really feel good about the planning and except for this one thing right there that I didn't anticipate pretty much everything has gone the way I had anticipated that it would and uh, however I've done these projects like I said many times uh, you may run into problems especially when we're not in the physical classroom together where I can immediately give you advice on how to do that uh, you may run into problems that you just gotta somehow solve on your own uh, when you're not in the actual physical classroom with your classmates who can sometimes tutor you and show you how things are done or your teacher who can definitely uh, give you advice and sometimes that advice is like you know talk less and color more um, that's good advice <laughs> you should listen to it um, alright let's see what else we got here now in the lower portion of this it's a sky blue looks like to me so I'm going that's a lot of blue and it also looks like there's some sky blue over here in the middle of all of this I think above and below this or maybe what I'm going to do oh I see that goes in there so the sky blue will be in the middle stripe and then the uh, colors in the background I get it alright so let's go with uh, the sky blue if I can locate it that is a light blue so we need a sky blue Ooh, that came out nice. You better be careful. I've not yet snapped off a pencil. A colored pencil yet. However, it's still early in the project, but I've been doing the projects with the 7th uh, graders and the 6th graders and have yet to break off a pencil. So I've been pretty lucky and uh, pretty conservative. I'm trying to get all three projects for the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade done all on one 24-pack of colored pencils and uh, not have any uh, broken leads. If I can make uh, good use of my materials and discipline myself, then I'll be able to make it all the way all through those projects. Now, I take pretty good care of these uh, colored pencils because I'm super uptight about uh, my materials and how they're cared for. However, a lot of them in the physical classroom have been dealt with pretty harshly by others. and. Uh, you may find that there's some pencils you just can't even get those things to sharpen. Uh, but I am uh, pretty conservative with my materials and equipment here, and so I think that I might reach uh, my, I know, super exciting goal of being able to finish all three grade level design projects on one set of colored pencils and never have broken one off yet. But I don't want to jinx myself because bad things can happen. Alright, I love this blue, cerulean blue. This is a very, very important painting color too, by the way. Uh, the way it mixes up with other colors such as browns and, and whites and uh, makes beautiful violets as, as, as well. So, uh, it's a very important color in painting and it's a pretty important color in color in here too. Uh, and I think, uh, I hope that you're uh, keeping up with the instruction Although I know it's hard to when you are not in the physical classroom. But if you were spending the 30-some uh, minutes every day that we do uh, in these projects, uh, you are probably keeping up with the instruction at the same level that I'm making it right here. Now, before too long, of course, the design unit will be over. And at the end of the design unit, there is always a quiz. And that quiz will require the use of your notes uh, that we took way back at the beginning of this uh, quarter. So on the first day of the quarter we went over the rules notes and then on the second day of the quarter, second day art class, fourth quarter, or this particular quarter, uh, we uh, did the design notes. And you should have taken those notes down. You will be needing those when we take the quiz and uh, the notes on uh, online where the video of the notes will be blocked 
uh, prior to that. So you will need your own set of actual physical notes that you took down from the presentation on the design lecture. So uh, the time to be checking those things would not be uh, the day of the design lecture. Uh, the, the, day of the design quiz, excuse me. It would be sometime like sooner rather than later. And I say that a lot in the physical classroom as well. Those of you that have been my students before, I'm sure you're aware of all of this. Alright, this blue is coming in there pretty quickly. And so, it's funny that some of the colors seem to have less drag, less friction against the paper than other colors do. And I think that's probably the stuff that is uh, they're made out of. Whatever the pigment is, that's the color that's in this. It may be, some of it may be more chalky and some of it may be more oily. Uh, whatever it is that they put into the colors. And so some of the colors are very, um, they slide across the paper very nicely. And other colors, you really got to fight with them because they're like uh, rough or chalky. Alright, here we go. Now we're making good progress. Got to keep focused on this tight work. Roll that pencil in your fingers a lot. So it's got that tight little sharp corner for your detail work when it comes to you. Alright, now also, blue and orange are completely opposite colors on the color wheel, and so see, they show up against each other really nicely as well. Okay, progress being made. Looking over here, I see inside of the letter B is more of this sky blue, or cerulean blue if you were painting is what it would be called. Hear the birds singing outside. You can hear the timer ticking away, making sure we get our bell to bell instruction in here, even though we're not in the physical classroom. We're still using a bell. And when it dings, that means we've been at this for about 37 or 38 minutes. And Typical class time is somewhere over 40 minutes, uh, depending on uh, what our schedule is. So sometimes, most of the time, classes are about 43 to 45 minutes long, although sometimes classes are longer than that. Uh, so depending on what kind of a schedule is being run at the school, whether it's a six-period day or an eight-period day, classes will be between... You know, 43 minutes total and maybe about 53 minutes total uh, depending on the schedule. But either way, we're getting about 40 minutes of production time, between 35 and 40 minutes of production time on the video, the e-lesson every day. That looks fantastic. I'm going to leave that alone for right now and move on to something else here. Um, <clears throat> I look back at my work and uh, I can actually see that there's more of this sky blue down in here and also that middle stripe in Ohio is sky blue. So those are large areas and I've got the sky blue in my hand. I want to simply keep working with it. And I think that's a good uh, piece of advice as well for you all uh, when you're making your own projects. You know, simply look at what ha takes the longest, has the most uh, square footage and uh, go with that first and get that out of the way and you will enjoy a much better <coughs> sense of progress on the project that way. I've noticed over the many years. And uh, that's really kind of when you start blocking all of these colors and it starts to give you that really really um, powerful effect. And Starts, you start seeing the actual artwork that you had imagined when you were doing the layout work and your planning. You start, and that what you imagined in your mind is usually the only thing that's really close to perfect. Being able to make the thing that you imagined in your mind is really, really difficult. But how would you ever know if you didn't plan it out? And uh, Plato, he was a, a philosopher thousands of years ago, Plato had his idea was that the only thing that really is perfect 
that means the only thing that a human can create that's perfect is the idea of something and so you know when we came up with the idea for whatever our flag or banner was going to be here then probably something popped into our mind and so the only thing that will probably be ever perfect in all of that is simply the idea that we thought of at first and, and once you try to make it you start having problems with it of course because you know not everything works out uh, the way you had imagined it so uh, so maybe Plato's right um, maybe we can only settle for whatever it is that we're able to make and we may never be able to totally get what we uh, had imagined the perfect idea but think about that for a while but sometimes I know I've made artwork that was not even close to what I had imagined however it came out pretty neat so it had stuff added to it you know uh, it had beauty added to it that I had not anticipated and so when you're making a piece of artwork you can't totally ever fully uh, completely uh, you know plan out every everything uh, even if you did you would still have problems with it so planning is more of an aid it's not the solution to every problem but it sure does help uh, when you start having issues you especially ones that you had anticipated and you say I, I thought this would be a problem and then you were able to address it because you had anticipated that that would happen and that's kind of what you call a contingency plan so when I was in the military we spent a great deal of time planning uh, everything we did uh, and you know when it's something really complicated or dangerous like a bridging operation or installing minefields uh, then it has to be really well planned out you can't just show up and say hey hand me that explosive and start <laughs> monkeying with it you have gotta know what you're doing if you're building bridges there very very dangerous uh, heavy equipment that's being used right where people are working and uh, you've got a plan for that too you have to so and they want to see your plan and then pretty soon you know you start getting good at planning and you can almost almost plan for almost every possible outcome but you can't plan for them all Okay, that is looking great. I'm going to sharpen this up. No, I still got some of it left. So I'm going to continue when I look at my uh, idea paper. This blue continues behind my symbol uh, for my um, zodiac symbol. So I'm just going to keep at that and carefully kind of tuck some of this in here together. And, you know, in just a few minutes here, I'm feeling fantastic about the progress. And so if you're making progress like I'm making progress, then you're doing a fantastic job. This, uh, prog this project is really only a few days old right now. So by the time we get to the end of this project, and most projects take 10 or 11 days, by the time we get to the end of this project, we should be ready to move on to something a little bit more interesting in the next project so we'll be draw doing some drawings in the next project uh, a lot more a um, lot more complicated kind of artwork uh, because it really does have to look like something so uh, when we start drawing that's where a lot of people who have got really good design skills and design skills are the ability to put together colors and shapes so that they're just really neat to look at and keep your attention for long periods of time people with good design skills sometimes struggle with uh, reproducing precisely what they see and drawing is a observational exercise in a lot of ways and uh, so part of, oh, well, there we go. We've got, uh, that represents pretty much the end of the period here. However, I'm going to finish up my blues because I'm committed to the blues. And uh, then I think in our next session, well, that's, we'll just keep on coloring. That's usually the longest part of the whole project is trying to get all of this 
opacity and this bright, rich, super saturated color taken care of. And, uh, you know, anybody can scribble together a bunch of weak colors, but, you know, something looks almost like it was cut out of construction paper and glued down. Now that's a, that's an acquired skill right there. And you just gotta be dedicated to the craft. Also, if you're coloring on a hard surface, this paper, I've got it against a wooden surface, and a uh, smooth wooden surface. And when you can bear down really firmly against that smooth wooden surface, uh, or it doesn't have to be wood, it could be a plastic, or it could be a tabletop that's just not even like formica, uh, but it really helps when that underlying surface that you're coloring over top of uh, is really smooth and and really really firm. Uh, so I like to uh, on my in my physical classroom the tabletops we have some masonite boards on top of them that are generally when they're clean are pretty smooth. And, and also over on the uh, girls portion of the room uh, they have their tables are pretty smooth to begin with. Although a couple of them have got some scratches in them and they also have some. Uh, drawing boards over there by my chalkboard that they can uh, acquire and then use to smooth out their coloring with. Uh, so it does work a lot better when you're coloring if you have that solid uh, smooth textured background behind your artwork. If you're trying to color on top of a soft surface such as a, uh, a folder or something uh, you're really going to struggle. you got to work twice as hard and you really don't get good opacity. Plus, it kind of it kind of stretches your paper all out of shape, and then it curls up on you. There's just lots of other problems. So, try to keep it on a smooth, really, really rigid surface, and uh, you'll find that you get a lot better product that way. And these are things that you know nobody ever really told me this. I just figured this out after making hundreds of messed up drawings and watching other people color a lot. Alright, that looks fantastic. That's a good session. Uh, we'll get back together again. So, have a nice day. Talk to you soon.